So let's suppose we want to calculate the power it requires a 2,000 kilogram car to climb a 20 degree inclined plane if the car has a constant velocity of 25 meters per second. So we're assuming that there is a drag force due to air resistance and the magnitude is 500 newtons. So let's look at our object, our car, moving up our inclined plane. Let's find all the forces acting on our car. So we have two forces that point downward. We have the drag force and we have the force of gravity, mg sine of the angle theta. And the upward force, which is the force due to friction, which is in turn created by the engine in the car, points upward. And we want to calculate what this force is. So because we have constant velocity, according to the second law of motion, the sum of all the forces acting on the car along the inclined plane is equal to zero because this is equal to m times a and a is zero. So if we sum up all the forces, we get the following result. We choose upward along the inclined plane to be positive, downward to be negative. So the force we want to find minus the gravitational force minus the drag force equals zero. So since we want to find what this force is, let's leave this on the left side and bring everything else to the right side. We get the following result. And now we plug in our mass, we plug in our g, we plug in our theta, our angle 20 degrees, and we plug in our 500 newtons. We multiply and sum up and we get approximately 7,200 7, newtons. So this is the force required to move our car along the inclined plane with constant velocity of 25 meters per second. Now, how exactly do we calculate the power? Well, recall the formula for instantaneous power is equal to our derivative of the work function with respect to time. And recall that work is equal to the dot product of the force and displacement function. So we know what the force is, we don't know what our displacement is. But notice, because force is assumed to be constant, we can bring it to the outside. And we get the following result. Force times infinitely small change displacement divided by infinitely small change in our time. So this term is actually the rate of change of displacement, which is the same thing as velocity. So that means this is the same thing as taking the dot product of the force and velocity vector. And because they point along the same axis, they point in the same direction, the angle is zero. So that means we simply plug in our values we know what our velocity is and we know what our force is. We multiply them and we get approximately 180,000 watts of power, so joules per second. Now let's suppose we want to convert this to horsepower to see how much horsepower our engine and the car must have for the car to be able to climb this inclined plane of 20 degrees at a constant velocity of 25 meters per second. So there's one horsepower in every 746 watts. So that means if we have 180,000 watts, we simply take the 180,000 watts divided by 746 watts and we get approximately 241 horsepower. So our engine and the car should have at least this much horsepower for it to be able to climb this inclined plane of 20 degrees and a constant velocity of 25 meters per second. 